This week at Starbase, Booster 13 gets cryo-tested, Ship 30 is brought to the launch site, and we see our first glimpse of testing for a potential booster catch attempt. Crews also continue with a rapid pace of construction on the new office building, parking garage, and Star Factory expansion. Now let's dig into this week's SpaceX update. Friday morning began with the removal of the ring stand from Mega Bay 1, indicating that Booster 14 has finished stacking. Construction on the first quarter of the new Starbase parking garage advanced considerably this week, starting with the placement of precast components for the second level of the section of the garage. The first outside precast concrete panels were brought in and joined together with wall and beam panels, and each section was quickly installed using the exposed steel weldments. Once the beams for the third level were in place, work advanced on the next section of outer panels onto which the fourth level deck began to be installed. The completed garage will feature six levels in all. Off camera, the other end of the building has seen similar progress. A new elevator door, which goes inside the work stand to lift workers and equipment underneath starships, was installed in the back left corner of Mega Bay 2. At the launch site, the chopsticks on the orbital launch integration tower were lifted clear of the launch mount for actuator testing. Once they were in position, the new actuator was put through its paces. Starting slowly, the port side arm was put through a series of short, then increasingly faster movements. Starting with an outward swing to rest its position, another swing test was conducted on the chopsticks, giving our first hint of just how powerful the new chopstick actuator is. A new bridge crane trolley was delivered to the Star Factory as work continues to bring the overhead cranes inside the newly expanded Star Factory into service. While rover cam was being cleaned, a new bridge crane girder was delivered to the Star Factory, joining the trolley that arrived earlier. Over at the Massey Outpost, Booster 13 was put through its first round of cryogenic testing. The methane tank was filled with liquid nitrogen, held for several hours, then detanked. Meanwhile, a work stand door was brought to Mega Bay 2. Once it arrived, the door was raised upright and installed on the new stand being assembled in the back left corner of Mega Bay 2. Shortly after midnight on Saturday, the second door section was installed on the new work stand in Mega Bay 2. Construction of the new office building continues to move ahead, with workers adding beams for the fifth floor. SpaceX's LR-11000 was relocated to the orbital launch mount on Sunday, stopping at the eastern end of the launch platform. At the Massey Outpost, the center section of the Starship Static Fire Stand's flame bucket was lowered into the trench. Over at the ring yard, Booster 11's hot stage ring was brought inside of Mega Bay 1 as preparations continue for Flight 4. A foggy Monday morning saw the test article support ring installed on the new structural test stand at the Massey Outpost. Outside Mega Bay 2, a third work stand door section arrived at the front entrance and was brought in and installed with the others. Workers continued moving forward with another round of glass installation on the Star Factory building's facade, expanding the second row of windows around the corner and heading towards Mega Bay 2. Over at the launch site, the LR-11000 was set up to begin load testing the hold down clamps on the orbital launch mount to verify them for launch operations following the replacement of the linkage arms. Glass installation of this side of the Star Factory facade reached 17 panels by early afternoon. Continuing to outfit Mega Bay 2's work stands, a fourth door section was installed on the back left corner stand. Booster 13 conducted its second cryo test at the Massey Outpost. This time, the liquid oxygen tank was filled with liquid nitrogen to validate its readiness for static fire testing. After the fourth door was put into place, yet another door section was lifted into the back left work stand in Mega Bay 2, making five in total now. Late in the evening, the top ring for the work stand was brought in and lifted onto the stand's legs by one of the bridge cranes. The two-point shiplifter was brought into Mega Bay 2 on Tuesday morning as workers prepared to bring Ship 30 out of the build site. After completing the second row of glass the previous afternoon, the installation of the windows continued on the third level of the Star Factory facade. Testing of the chopsticks continued at the launch complex. Moving at its fastest speed yet, the port arm was moved from a launch position to catch position in just five seconds. 
With SpaceX expecting a booster catch attempt potentially as soon as Flight 5, these high-speed tests were conducted three more times, characterizing the motion and behavior of the arms. When the actuators stop, the high inertia and flexibility of the arms produces a lot of wobble, with the arms gradually bleeding off the considerable energy of their momentum. It'll be interesting to see how SpaceX handles the dynamics in the chopsticks. The chopsticks were also tested for rapid swing-out motions, verifying a full range of high-speed motion from the arms for catching. The high-speed testing of the chopsticks was followed by a final, slower test of the actuator, closing at roughly half the speed as before, which showed significant reduction in arm wobble. By noon, most of the center section of the new office building had reached the fifth floor level, and work will soon begin on the South Wing's own fifth level and roof supports. Large amounts of venting were seen as workers purged the launch tower ship quick disconnect plumbing, cleaning the propellant lines of any debris that may have entered the system during maintenance and upgrades. Turning back to Mega Bay 2, the two-point shiplifter was hooked up to one of the building's overhead cranes, hoisted into position and hooked up to Starship 30. Meanwhile, the second two-point lifter was brought to the launch complex to be hooked up to the LR-11000. After a few hours of preparation, Starship 30 was picked up and moved onto an awaiting transport stand. Then we can see workers set up for a quick photo op on the self-propelled modular transporter in front of Ship 30, taking a group photo before heading back to work. Late that night, Ship 30 was detached from the two-point lifter and rolled out of Mega Bay 2. It then headed out of the build site and onto Highway 4 around midnight to make a Wednesday morning journey to the launch complex. Pulling in at the front gate, Starship 30 and its transports entered the launch complex and headed for Test Stand B, where the LR-11000 was ready and awaiting to place the ship on the stand. The two-point lifter was then guided into place to be attached to Ship 30. Once attached and with teams ready, Starship 30 was lifted off the transport stand and placed onto Test Stand B. A short time later, the ship was connected to the Test Stand's ground support equipment interface. Back at the build site, the two-point lifter inside Mega Bay 2 was lowered down onto the support stand ahead of relocation to the rocket garden. A continuous flight auger and crane began piling work for the second launch pad and tower, drilling the first two boreholes for the launch pad's friction pile foundations and placing rebar cages inside. The elevator floor for the third work stand was brought into Mega Bay 2 and was soon installed in the front left corner of the bay. To protect the booster and dampen the secondary motion of the chopsticks, large bumper pads were installed on the port side chopstick. Repeating the process seen on the back left corner, workers began installing door sections on the front left corner work stand in Mega Bay 2. With Starship 30 installed and secured to the test stand, the SPMTs were brought back to the build site. At Mega Bay 2, the next four work stand doors were raised vertically and installed, forming a filling in the protective walls around the base of the new Starship work stand. With launch pad construction now getting underway, a temporary access road has been laid across the wetlands from Highway 4 to the eastern end of the Gateway to Mars wall. To accommodate the new access route, workers began tearing down the end of the wall to create a new side entrance. Thursday morning at the launch complex saw three more holes bored, filled with concrete and rebar cages inserted. Back at the build site, the top ring for the third work stand was installed in the front right corner of Mega Bay 2. Contrasting with the earlier high-speed tests, the port side chopstick arm was run through a very slow inward motion before extending back outward. Outside the complex, crews finished removing the end section of the gateway to Mars wall. The ship quick disconnect on the launch tower was then extended in the afternoon as workers prepared to simulate a launch. After popping the interface protection panel open, the ship quick disconnect performed a simulated launch retraction. Once the interface drew back, the tower arm swung away and the protective cover was shut. 50 minutes later, the ship quick disconnect arm was brought back to its normal position on the tower. With the cryo-testing campaign complete now, Booster 13 began the return journey from Massey's outpost to the build site for final outfitting. This week at the Cape, Doug Toe just read the instructions to see on Friday after less than six hours in port to support the Starlink Group 6-54 mission. 
On Saturday, Falcon 9 Booster 1060 was raised vertically at Launch Complex 39A ahead of its launch later in the evening with a pair of Galileo satellites. About 10 hours later, Falcon 9 Booster 1060 lifted off on its 20th and final mission, carrying the two Galileo satellites into a mid-inclination orbit. The booster was then flown in the rarely used expendable configuration, using all of the performance available to the Falcon 9 for this long-duration mission. Falcon 9 Booster 1076 then lifted off in its 13th mission on Sunday, carrying 23 Starlink satellites into orbit for the Starlink Group 6-54 mission. On Tuesday, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 was laid onto a self-propelled modular transporter for its return to Roberts Road. In the afternoon, Cygnet Warhorse 3 towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea in support of Starlink Group 6-55. A few hours later, Bob returned to port with fairing halves from the Galileo and Starlink Group 6-54 mission. Cygnet Titan then returned to Port Canaveral on Wednesday with just read the instructions and Falcon 9 Booster 1076 in tow. Starlink Group 6-55 lifted off on Thursday, heading into space on the 19th flight of Booster 1067. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padres out.